Alright, so today we're going to continue our discussion on memory hierarchy and well this is, has been a very long topic because as we learned before, uh, in volume architecture between these two main components processor and memory there is already a huge performance gap in between them. So uh, the main thing, uh, the main problem in computer architecture right now is that the performance of memory is so slow so that it becomes the critical part of uh, the application um, is when we are executing the program. So it's really important that we, f we need to find out some way to mitigate this huge gap between processor and memory performance. So the solution that architects come out is that, well, we just build memory hierarchy in a way that we insert some small amount of small cache to mitigate this gap. And we found this idea works really well. So it's not just one level of cache right now, but we have multiple levels of cache. And being a software engineer, it's really important that to, to under, for you to understand, okay, if I have this pieces of a code, how does my code work on um, those uh, processors, uh, uh, those memory hierarchies that I have? And it turns out that you really need to have some basic technique uh, to analyze the behavior of your code by emulating them. So uh, here is a summary of the C equal to ABS that allow you to put into those cache parameters so that you know how to partition your uh, memory addresses so that you can know when your cache meets this memory addresses, how are they going to deal with it? And is it going to cause a mess? And if it's a mess, what kind of mess is that? so that we can address the fundamental reason behind those messes to improve performance. So uh, there are a hardware approaches like prefetch to improve compulsory messes. However, except for that, every hardware approach is mainly mitigating the miss penalty. So it turns out that if you really want to improve the cache miss rate, which is the root cause of cache messes, the only way the best way to do it is actually trying to rewrite your code. And uh, last week we have been demonstrating that uh, why database tables are typically stored in common store because it helps us to uh, fulfill the workload that you are executing most of the time so that we can not only uh, improve the com conflict mess but also capacity mess because every time you are just traversing uh, the column that you are using instead of getting a lot of garbage data when you are traversing records. It also improves the compulsory mess because uh, uh, you, you, you allow the, uh, the, the prefetch prefetcher to get uh, uh, to, to guess your locality better. So 
Uh, proof of that, uh, that's one example. And today we are going to see more examples of that. And uh, so, uh, another one that uh, I want you to look at is loop, right? Loop is probably one of the most frequently used program structure. Uh, and today uh, we are going to give you some example. So actually, let's start from the example that we have been really familiar with. So that was the one of the demo that we had early on, and then uh, we say that the left hand side had better uh, CPU, but the right hand side had worse CPU. And uh, a lot, some of them were even questioning me, like, okay, didn't the instruction count different? And then I showed the performance counter. The instruction count is exactly the same. Uh, well, not exactly the same, but very similar. Right? So, turns out CPI is the difference. But what really makes the CPI different? And uh, it's actually, a lot of you already know, if you look at the locality of code, the right hand side has worse locality. And if we want to improve the performance of this one, right, of the right hand side, the version V, the best way to do it is to change the order of uh, loop iterations in terms of that uh, you will have better performance. And this technique is one of the first, very first, uh, loop optimization for memory locality. That's called loop interchange. This is called loop interchange. And now, let's look at this one. It's our lovely friend, NVIDIA Tegra X1, which has terrible problem on this piece of a code, right? So now, I'm asked, uh, what's the cache? Get how cache in this right? Okay, so now, I am doing another type of optimization, or say, code rewriting. So the previous code looked like this, and now I'm rewriting the code like this. Can you tell me what's the data cache miss rate for this piece of the code now? All right, let's wrap up in 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. Okay, so, all right. Definitely, I think this kind of question would be the killer question in the midterm. So why don't you spend some time to discuss with your friends to see that changes your mind or maybe it will lead you to a worse direction, but let's go ahead and discuss that.
All right, let's wrap up in 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. Okay. Uh huh. We have two sets of results A and C. Okay. So, can I have someone share your thoughts about it? So, remember. Okay, so first of all, do you all agree that this piece is in the code would deliver? equivalent result as the previous version. Do you agree with that? Do you guys 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 agree with that? No. no? You are not. Okay. <laughs> what? I didn't see the previous one, so I can't make an informed Okay. Decision. That's the previous version. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, can you go back to the current version? The current version? Okay. Okay. Um, I think they achieved the same thing. They are the same thing. Okay. Yes. Now, anyone want to share what's the memory performance of this piece of a code? Like your discussion, your group's discussion. Any idea? I miss Aaron now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Ryan, right? Yeah. Okay, my second best friend. But now you are the best. <laughs> okay, what do you think? Well, it's a four-way set of sensitivity, so uh -huh. in the first loop iteration of the loop, we can fit all uh, four elements. Well, the four. Okay, first of all, right? Very good observation, right? Yeah. So sometimes, right, for this piece, like, okay, so here's the thing, right? Uh, sometimes you don't have to write all the math down as long as you're confident with your explanation. So for this piece of code, it's four set associativity. And you only have four different data structures. Right? So in a worst case scenario, even though they are all conflicting in the same set, uh, they're not going to kick each other out because we are only traversing this four sets of things. Right? Okay. What else? Okay. In that loop, so it will eliminate those conflict misses, so uh -huh. you can only have compulsory misses. Okay, what's the percentage of compulsory misses? Uh, I said it was around 10%. Around 10%, how do you get that? I, took, I don't know if this is correct, but I took the four array, so I just assumed the first first four is going to be compulsory miss, and then since it's a double uh -huh. data type, it's uh, 8 byte inside. So okay, so this is 8 byte, right? So it's a 64 byte block. So which means that every 8 elements, we're going to see a compulsory miss, so, right? So I just did 4 times 8, and uh, I just did 4 over 4 times 8 for the miss rate. Okay, so here we have uh, 4 times 8. Wait, was that right? Okay, so we will have 4 times 1 for every 8, right? So what does that mean? Every 8. So we have a total of 512 elements to traverse, right? So this is the amount of misses that we are going to have, right? Over how many cache accesses are we going to perform? It's going to be 512 times 4. Agree? Okay. Now, is that everything? Uh, well, so then we have a 
second loop. OK, yeah. regarding the second loop, phi tail elements, two data structures. Right? So we will have phi 12 times 2 on the basis. Now, how many bases are we going to see here? Okay, compulsory means from loading D. So it will be 1 times 5 tail divided by A. Why not misses from E? It was previously already loaded. It's previously already loaded. But Is that sufficient enough? No. Then what else? You cannot make that guess, right? You're just guessing now. Give me some more reasons why each are remain in a cache. Locality? No. There's one more thing we haven't used in this problem. See, we have used a, we have used B. What's the other one we haven't used? No? Okay, so how many elements are we traversing? Five hundred and twelve. Okay, so for each data structure, how large the data we need? To store. We can only store 32 kilobytes. We can only store 32 kilobytes in total, but how many stuff that we are going to, uh, to store temporarily? 512 times 8, right? Each double is 8. So how, how, how large is that? It's 4K. Right? You have a 32 kilobyte if you have 4K and you don't have conflict messes. What does that mean? That's not the answer I would like to hear. Right? You don't have conflict messes and you have sufficient amount of space. What does that mean? What? Uh, capacity means and no. Okay, here again. Here, here, here. What I'm asking again. Right now, you only need to store four K bytes for each data structure. You have a total of thirty-two kilobytes of cache, and you don't have conflict misses in these pieces of a code. What does that imply? No, that's not about, that's not what it's implying. What does that imply? You don't have, you, you have, you only have 16 kilobytes of data to store. You have a 32 kilobytes of cache and you don't have conflict misses. What does that mean? What? E should be in a cache, right? Think about this. You have sufficient amount of cache space, so there shouldn't be capacity miss, and there is no conflict misses when you are traversing this piece of code. So, if you don't have conflict misses and you are not going to have capacity misses, what does that mean? Everything will stay in a cache. Everything will stay in the cache, right? So, that's every. So, when you are traversing a second loop, only loading D will cause the misses, right? So, once you get this, right, you will figure out it's close to ten percent, right? From hundred percent 
to 10%. So this optimization is called loop vision, which we separate a single loop into two separated loop. That's called loop vision. Okay, so I, let me check if I have the demo. I think I do. Okay. What the? Oh boy. Sometimes. Okay. Demo. Let me see if I have the demo for you. Hello. Software optimizations. Here we go. Okay. So. Okay, loop interchange, right? So this is the optimization that we have been looking before. And now let's do the loop vision. And uh, loop vision is I change the left hand side, well, the right hand side to the left hand side. And now, oops, is the machine still alive? Okay, now I connect to this Jetson Nano and then now I'm running it. So uh okay so you can check right so loop a is this version right if you check the miss rate for loop a is only uh 700k but for loop b c right it's 1.6 million right a lot worse a lot worse right and you might ask me about oh, why we have this 700k uh, that's coming from the initialization, not from this uh, this particular loop. So if you do the same math as we did before, you will figure out uh, for this version, uh, for this version, right? The 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 performance is actually uh, is actually uh, a lot better uh, in terms of uh, cache miss rate. Okay, so hopefully this. Quick little demo. We'll convince you that this kind of uh, optimization really helps. Now, let me ask you one more thing, right? So, this is more efficient. Now, if I have an Intel processor, does more efficient or more efficient perform better? All right, let's wrap up in 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. Okay. The initial bond shows that, well, every answer has sufficient amount of advocator. D is very welcoming, but you know, from your previous trial, your, your, your classmates are not that convincing. So if you try to cheat during the midterm by looking at your classmates uh, test, that's probably not a good idea. But when you go ahead and discuss with those, uh, your, your lovely classmates in the midterm and see if this time it works out. Go!
not totally sure because I think it's going to be. Yeah, the A has more memory references. Yeah, I think that. All right, that's right about in 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. What? It's not a lock. It's not locked. But it says it's not locked. What can I do? And 26 of you already answered it, so it's definitely not locked. You want to try again? <laughs> oh, come on. All right, can some of you start the company? Okay. I mean, I should really thinking about how to start the company, but I feel it's a hard sell because we are not doing like chat GPT related stuff these days. And this is not even generative AI. All right, so now let's see, what do you guys think? Okay, now 27 of you think it's D. What's your name? Uh, Jared. Jared? <laughs> Okay, do you want to be my friend? <laughs> okay, good friend. What do you think? So, um, me and my partner weren't entirely sure. Mm -hmm. We thought it was D just mm -hmm. because um, when you're going through uh, B, you're accessing um, like the, all of the memory references of A, B, and C, D uh, in the same iteration. Mm -hmm. But in A, you have to do that like twice so like you're accessing e and d in the in the second loop uh -huh. versus in the uh in, the, in b you're only doing that once okay so another thing to talk about right so what was the problem of this pieces of a code on tegra the version b why is it performing bad on tegra what kind of misses are dominating I think it was, uh, it's, um, <laughs> it was, uh, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm sorry, I don't remember the name. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need some hand? Uh, yeah. Can you give him a hand? I, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> You're not entirely sure? Do you want to give him a hand? What kind of miss... What kind of misses are the dominating misses in version B when we run it on Tegra X1? There are three options, right? Option one! Compulsory misses. Sound right? Uh, no. Conf uh, option two! Capacity misses. Oh, I think it was capacity. Option three, conflict misses. Right. Um, I don't remember correctly, I think it was capacity. Okay, what do you guys think? What? Compulsory miss? Are you guys really ready for the midterm? The answer is complete misses, right? In Tegra X1, because we only have four ways and you're traversing five data structures in the meantime, right? So it's like, okay, I have a four bedroom apartment, but there are five people competing, right? Someone must be kicked out all the time, right? So turns out that the problem with B on Tegra X1 is because there is limited amount of 
set associativity. So now, if we are moving it to Intel processor, are we still going to have those conflict messes? No, right? That was something we have tried in two lectures ahead, ago, right? So you already know that, right? So the reason is conflict messes. Okay, question number two. We were talking about loose fission, right? Version A is fission. Version B. Fission. Option one. Capacity miss. Is that right? Uh, for us. Uh, for which one again? I'm sorry. Uh, for version A. For version A. Compare again version B. Is it helping to address capacity miss? Uh, no. Is it helping to address compulsory miss? No. Then how about conflict miss? Um, probably. <laughs> probably, right? <laughs> so version A is making your code more tolerable to potential conflict methods. However, if it's an Intel processor, we don't actually have any conflict methods. So, which means the optimization that you made in version A does not help you at all. Right? Now, what's the problem with version A? You have, like I said, because here, you have to go through this in a second loop. You have, to go through, you have to go through E twice. So you are actually having more and more memory accesses, which potentially getting more instruction count, as well as um, more traffic to your memory hierarchy. So it turns out, for this piece of a code, if you run it on Intel processors, performance would be worse. Another, another takeaway here is that if you are thinking about uh, which company is more friendly to the software programmer is definitely Intel because they did a lot of stuff to make your processor code um, uh, to make your processor code uh, to make your processor code performing better on uh, without well like bad written uh, worse written uh, performing. Uh, like worse optimized performance uh, code performing better. So looking at this, right? Loop the same version, loop A versus loop B. And this time, right? If we compare against the previous wrong, which why which my result why my result vanished? So okay, let me save it. Okay, save it. So. This is the previous one on Jensen Nano. Version A has better cache performance. But now, if you run it on Intel processor, it's flipped around. Version A has better, worse cache performance. Although not uh, significantly worse, but these additional ones are coming from the fact that because you have to fetch the E for the second time. So you are going to have more cache accesses and here, as you can tell, right? And it turns out that your overall miss rate is going to be higher with uh, the other version of the code. So here's the thing, right? If you are on Intel processor, then the fission doesn't really work out. In fact, uh, loop fission is a bad idea on Intel processors because the code is going to incur fewer memory references. If your data structure is not too complicated in a way that it will cause a lot of conflict messes. So if you are on a JSON Nano processor, you want to do loop fission because it will help you to alleviate the conflict messes. However, in Intel processor, you want to do the other way around. If you see a loop like version A, you want to convert it to version B. And this code optimization is the opposite of loop fusion, called loop fusion. 
And for loop function, it would help us to reduce the total amount of memory references to improve the performance. Right. So, so there is no golden rule saying that you should always do loop fusion or loop fusion. It totally depends on what kind of processors are you running your code. And it will change significantly. So that's why as a software programmer, you want to do code optimization. And you want to know computer architecture because those stuff are not easily tell. And the compiler cannot assume which kind of processor you are running on top. All right, that's about the loop optimization. So loop optimization is good for, uh, I will say, one dimensional data like vectors. Now. We are entering the era of machine learning. So, well, we are now in the era of machine learning. Most of the data that we are dealing with are matrices. So, for matrices, blocking and tiling is probably the most useful optimization. So, let's start with matrix multiplications, the very, very basic fundamental mathematics going on in convolutional neural networks. So, the left hand side is uh, the matrix multiplication code, the traditional matrix multiplication code. Algorithm class tells you it's order n cubic code. And uh, if n equal to 1k, it would take about uh, 1 second. So, how long does it take when n equal to 2k? What do you think? Give me an estimate. Twice? No? Well, twice on each dimension. Right? So your n is twice. Eight times? Eight seconds? Sounds like a reasonable guess. Okay, let's run a demo to see how useful is your algorithm class. All right, so general matrix multiplication. Okay, so this is the pieces of a code we are going to run. Uh, I have a dump here, but I just don't do it. Okay, so let's try to run it. Let me compile it. See, this is the optimization flag, dash O3. So you know that I am, uh, using the optimization already. So, uh, let me see. Okay. What did they know this about? Okay, here I ran several configurations. I ran mm at 32, mm at 1k, also, nm at 2k, and let's see how much time it takes to finish all of them. Okay, here we go. So, when the first row tells you the execution time, when mm is 32. So, when we run it at 32, right, this is incredibly short. Now, if you run it at 1k by 1k, it takes around 2 seconds. Here? Okay, so 2 times 8, right? 16. But what we actually got? 27 seconds. What does that tell you? Don't trust those algorithm teachers. Right? Because the complexity doesn't help. Right? Did you see that? Did you see that? So, why are you guys taking com 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 algorithm complexity class? Doesn't make sense. Okay, so now, why the complexity 
the rule of complexity broken. Let's take a look at this. So this is the matrix multiplication. So uh, c equal to a times b. And now, when I'm calculating c0, 0, what do I need to do is that I would take a row like a0 and a column b something zeros and multiply them pairwisely and accumulate the result. Put it into c0, 0. Okay, when I want to count c0, 1, I will use the same row from a again, but a different column from b. Now, if I want to do c1, 2, the same column from a, different column from b. So far, you feel like, okay, the locality looks really good on c and a. Right? Same thing here, right? Now, again, if I assume that you know what a story, right? Now, I want to do c1, 0. Then I will take a row from a, a column from b. Right? Now, if, considering that, uh, assuming that, if I have a really large dimension, like 1k, right? And remember, each time, previously, each time, when I am, when I am fetching a column, right? It's not only 1k, right? You have to fetch well, let's, uh, let's forget about the block size, simply just looking at the size of that, right? Each column, saying that, okay, if I have a, if I have a 2k element, right? Each column itself is already 16k, right? So what does that tell you? Simply two columns is good enough to kick out everything that you store in a cache. Agree? Two rows, two columns, it's going to kick out everything, right? And the M1 cache for Intel Core i7 processor and the Ryzen processor is 32 kilobytes, 8 way, right? But again, for these cases, it's not about conflict misses anymore, it's about capacity misses. Because each row and each column is going to be 16K, and your whole cache, no matter how you reorganize it, it will require more than 32k to hold everything. So it turns out that you will see a lot of cache misses once your dimension grows up. And the reason why your networks will work out is because you have huge amount of data and large large, large number of parameters to adjust. So if the problem size is small, like the past, the code will work well. But if you're dealing with large problems, it won't work well, right? So that's why mesh multiplication is really important. Okay, so again, let's take a look of the, the address that we have, right, in uh, meshes, when we are trying to do mesh multiplication on B. Let me see. Uh, with, uh, when, when we are doing matches multiplications. So now let's dump the memory address of the other matches that we are multiplying. So let's see. Let me dump it. Okay. And again, use the script that I wrote. Right? With C equal to ABS. Uh, how come is it not showing anything? Oh, this one is still running. <sighs> okay, the problem with matrix multiplication demo is because it takes such a long time to generate the address sequence. And it's not even finished running. Hello? Why the demo takes so long? Are you guys really working? Or just because I pressed too many times? Or just because someone is also doing his homework or her own homework? Hello? 
All right, let's give it a little bit of time. Oh, no, that's why I have. Okay, let's assume. Let's assume because I feel like that then was going to take a lot of time. Okay, let's assume, right? Um, the address that you are going to dump looks like this. And with c equal to abs, right? You will see. You will see, right? Uh, your access is your access is although we said that it's mainly capacity miss, but beyond that, right? You, if you look at your access, it's concentrating on just two different indexes, right? So actually, there will be a lot of conflict misses as well, right? And um. Even though, right, like for each, like, okay, so, but when we, like, even though, even though it's within the same column, even though it's just within the same column, right, although we saw there, there, the main reason is conflict miss, uh, co capacity misses, but even though we're just in the same column, if you see the address sequence, you'll figure out that even though it's just within the same column, Conflict misses already starts. So it turns out that matrix multiplication, even though we need a larger cache, it still doesn't help. Because the conflict, conflict misses remains. So matrix multiplication is not only a capacity misses problem, but also a conflict misses problem. And from the previous one, right, you know, well, there's a boundary where we have conflict misses starts. Right. So here is another thought. If I know conflict misses is going to start at a 17th element, can I try to limit the scope of traversing each time to be just under that boundary? Right? Again, capacity miss or conflict misses occurs because you are accessing this sequence of addresses within a given window of time. But if I move around the time series, break them up, so that within a given window of time, I only need to concentrate on this amount of memory address, then I can avoid the conflict misses, right? So that comes the idea of blocking algorithms. So the idea of blocking algorithm is that for this pieces of a code, I break it up into the right hand side. Okay, six label of nested uh, iterations, right? But what it really does is that every time, instead of going through all the way to the end of a row or a column, like I just showed you, I figure out where is the best boundary that will cause the mess. Then, for each limited amount of time, I just do this little tile instead of going through the whole matrices. And every time, I just do a sub matrix matrix multiplications and. Gradually, every time I decompose matrix, a big matrix multiplications into smaller sub matrix multiplications, and I still can get the result if I come back and revisit the same tile again. There is a theory called matrix semi-ring that will prove this, but uh, mathematically, the right hand side code would generate the same outcome as the right hand side code. If you don't trust me, count the number of operations the right hand side will do is equivalent to the left hand side. But with the code on the right hand side, every period of time, every given window of time, instead of going through the complete row or complete column, you are only using this 
small pieces of cash. Okay, so now, if I break up my code using blocking algorithm or say tunneling algorithm, what kind of cash methods do you think we can remove? Let me see. Wait, I saw that I have a Okay, here we go. Oh, that's transpose. Uh oh. Uh, okay, let me see. Uh -oh. Okay, what kind of methods can we remove? Uh, what can I do? Give me a second. Okay, block algorithm. Here we go. All right. I forgot to do the animation, so let's do a. I'll say. All right, let's wrap up, wrap up in 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. Okay. So, uh, okay, let me read it. So right now what I see is that one of you chose A, 8 of you chose B, 11 of you chose C, and 24 of you chose D, and 2 chose E. So, uh, seems like we have a majority at D, so I just want to ask some of you to share your thoughts with us. Some of you. Some of you. Alright, what's your name again? Scott. Okay. What do you think? Um, I think that it's going to help reduce conflict misses because we don't we don't need to fill up the cache with uh, a full row of uh -huh. uh, either A, B, or C. We can just fill it up with uh, part of it. Okay. And then reuse it. Okay. Conflict misses. Mm -hmm. Is that the only thing? And then probably also capacity misses. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. at a time, and then with the, the block implementation, you can, uh, I guess, get, get rid of those, uh, or stop filling up the cache so much with the entries you're only going to use every so often. Mm, okay, so that is correct. So for this particular question, again, as I mentioned, right, instead of going through the whole column or the whole row, which would immediately fill up your cache, each time I'm only going through a tile. In addition, it also helped to alleviate the conflict misses because even though your, 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 your rows or columns are small, but previously, when I, when I, when I partition these edges, you already see that even within a column, it's already conflict misses, right? So for this piece of account, would definitely uh, improve capacity and conflict misses. Okay, now. I have another piece of a code called. Uh, so, another trick that we can further help performance is called matrix transpose. So, previously, we are doing a row multiplied by a column. But now, with matrix transpose, I can multiply a column with a, a row with another row. Right? So, uh, 
by do this, by doing this, the cost is that I will have to add a piece of code called transpose in front of um, the 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 measures multiplication code, right? And then with measure, however, when I'm doing the computation, it's right now just based on uh, row by row, right? So now I can show you a demo because this is again right. Previously, when you write your program, you will feel like every time when I call do something additional, I'm going to slow down my code performance. But now this time again, and previously in the previous assignment, a lot of you are using the algorithm of sorting. It allows you to use like an older one algorithm to compare, or older an algorithm to compare among two lists to give you better performance. So it's also going to beat like binary search and a lot of other algorithms. So most of it, so for those one who can get 100, 100 score, it's most because they are not using binary search. And, uh, and because of you know that you have to sort your data ahead of time. Right, so that's actually an extension to, like, my lecture keep giving you the hints about uh, the assignment. So you know what to do for this particular homework now, right? So, um, but let me show you this. Okay, so has that finished running? Okay, the previous cell finished running, and you see, like, what I show in the slide, right? A lot of them are just in zero or twenty, and with the same tag. So it shows that uh, the conflict message starts immediately. So now, uh, looking at the mesh styling algorithm, and let's see what the performance looks like. So uh, yeah, so previously we just showed you uh, the code of tiling algorithm, but we haven't really run it. So this piece is of a demo will run the performance of tiling algorithm so that you can compare them against uh, the baseline meshes multiplication algorithm. And similarly, I'm also running uh, this is pieces of a code with 32 and 1k and 2k elements. And let's see what the performance looks like at this point. And to save our time, I'm also going to run uh, the version with matrix transpose in the meantime. And why is it taking so much time to run? That shouldn't be the case though. Okay. Uh, let me let me stop and restart this kernel. Multiplications. Okay, so so this is the previous wrong result, right? Zero, two, twenty-six, and now let's give it a, a a shot on the block algorithm. So this is the block algorithm code, exactly the same as what I showed you before, and now let's run uh, the block algorithm and see what's going on, and. This time, it gives you the result really fast, right? And check the execution time. Previously, for 1K, it takes 2 seconds. But now, it's only 0 0.75, right? 3 times faster. And for the 2K case, it's now only 5 seconds compared against 27 that we had before. So it's also six times to seven times faster compared with previous. And also, if you see the ratio here, it's closer, it's very close to eight times now, right? Which tells you another story is that, okay, if we, I want to, so algorithm complexity has nothing wrong, has nothing wrong if cache misses doesn't exist. So with blocking algorithm, because I am getting rid of all the cache misses, 
So that's why this time the performance scales really well. And the trick is that because the cash miss rate is about the same. Because of the tiling algorithm. Okay, so now transpose. I'm adding the overhead of transpose. Let me show you the performance of that. Okay, with transpose, did you see? The execution time is even lower now. For 1k from 0 0.7, uh, sorry, 0 0.75 to now 0 0.6. For 2k, it's going down from 5 to 4. Right? So a lot of you might think, okay, why am I doing this transpose ahead of time? Even though I'm just running meshes multiplication once, it helps. It helps. But now, my question would be, knowing it helps is not enough. Can you tell me why it helps? All right, let's wrap up in 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. Okay. So, well, I think we need a discussion. Don't you think so? Let's go ahead and do it. Oops. All right, let's wrap up in 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. Okay, so let's see what you guys think. So this time, hmm, is it changing? 
Did I put the wrong slide? I don't think so. So, can some of you share your thoughts with us? By adding a matrix transpose, we see the performance boosted up again. But, how come? What's your name? I say okay. Shi Shi. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think it's sounds like a video conferencing. <laughs> okay, I think it's the problem of like row major and column major. Uh huh. Uh, previously, uh, for example, it is row major. Uh, a block is like loading a whole row or uh -huh. some part of this row. Uh huh. And for the B matrix, we need to like uh, load the column into the uh -huh. So previously it's a row and a column, but now it's a row and a row. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I'm saying uh, uh, previously it's like uh, I load a row of A uh -huh. and a row of B. A row of B? Yeah, but actually we need a column of B uh, oh. into the cache. Okay. And after the transpose, uh, we actually like load the uh, what, uh, like uh, load what we need. So this is a previous version. Yeah. And we are indeed loading a row and a column. Don't you agree with that? Uh, yeah. Right. So because we are changing the index here, right? That's the previous code. It's doing this. Yeah. Okay. So the previous code indeed load a column and a row as you were saying. So there's nothing wrong with the previous version of the code. Of course. Okay. Then why the right hand side is better? Uh, I think it's uh, when we load uh, each element in the B column. Uh huh. It actually loads the part of the row. Part of the row. Into the cache. Uh-huh. And after we transpose, we, uh -huh. we actually load the whole column into the cache. Whole row? Uh, yeah, whole row. Alright, so after this one, you are actually having a whole row? Yes, yeah. So what does that improve? Uh, I think it's improved uh, capacity and conflict. Uh, capacity, capacity and conflict masses. Okay, so Regarding capacity mass, what's the definition of capacity mass? Uh, uh, definition is like the cache capacity is limited and we cannot... Uh, yeah, but with tiling algorithm, with, if we partition the meshes carefully, are we seeing capacity mass? Uh, no. Okay, so there's no capacity mass here. How can you go? How are you going to improve capacity mass further? Improve capacity. If the capacity mass is already zero, how are you going to improve it further? Okay, yeah. So it's actually just conflict messes. Mm -hmm. Okay? Thank you, Professor. Okay, so for this question, right? Again, with measures, uh, with measures transpose. You think I'm adding an overhead, but actually I can improve the conflict methods. So, complexity teacher would tell you don't do extra things, but computer architecture teacher would tell you sometimes doing extra work is good, right? So that's why algorithm teachers typically don't ask you to do reading quiz before the lecture, but I do, because it will help you, right? So. All right, here is the summary. So again, the software optimizations for cache performance, there are tons of tips to do, uh, tons of mechanisms. And I cannot, I, if I want to have a course on that, it will take the whole quarter. So uh, today I'm just showing you some of the stuff and some of the tips. So first of all, uh, carefully lay out your data, uh, can improve capacity mass, carefully, uh, uh, make your data structure align with the access pattern can better exploit cache locality. For example, why not transpose? Why not do column store? 
right? Implementing an algorithm in a more cash-friendly way, like the tallying algorithm. It seems ugly, but it's useful. So here are some of the summary of the optimization that we have seen so far. So data layout, right? That helps improve cache messes, all types of cache messes. Blocking algorithm help to uh, 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 alleviate capacity messes, conflict messes, low friction conflict messes, low friction capacity messes, and loop interchange conflict messes or capacity messes. And again, for hardware, we can only alleviate miss penalty, but software, all we are doing is to avoid those misses. So you are more important than hardware guys in terms of the code performance. Got it? All right. So let me ask you another question. So here is the pieces of a code that I have. Um, okay, so for this pieces of a code, you can probably read, right? So I have, uh, let me see. Um, so I have, a, I have a pieces of a code that um, I will initialize an array I will randomize the array and then calculate the array sum and give you the average. That's the pieces of a code that I'm running. Now, I'm asking you if I have multi pieces of a code. Oh, sorry. If I'm running this pieces of a code with only 32 gigabytes of physical memory installed in the dimension is this large, what will happen? What will happen? All right, let's wrap up in 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. Okay, so let me see. Why don't I have animations for this one? Uh, what was the result? Okay, so the result looks like we need discussion. So why don't you go ahead and discuss with your friend for another 90 seconds.
All right, so that's wrap up in 15 seconds. Oops. Hello. Hello. Oh boy. Wrap up in 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. Okay, so after discussion, uh, I think I have to. After discussion, okay, still very chaotic. Every answer has its own advocator. So, to here, I think it's easier to run a demo then. Um, let me see. Okay, let's go to that window again. Lovely window. Okay, let me run this one real quick. Okay, so this is the virtual memory one. Okay, so here's the memory allocation code and let me run this program real quick. Hello? Are you okay? Okay, so, uh, okay, allow the, allow the contents. Oh, really? Uh, why? Okay, let me do this. Issues here. Ah, boy. Unable to connect. Huh, okay. So, looks like I have some issue with the cluster. So, okay, I will save the demo uh, for the next lecture. But before you leave the classroom, a few things that I want to let you know. So, first of all, uh, assignment two due this Thursday evening. And again, Please start early, and as we mentioned before, uh, server will be busy and cannot be a reason for late submission or extension because we already tell you ahead of time. And for this homework, every homework, we give you two weeks to do it. And why don't you start in the last two days, right? And uh, if you have question, uh, cannot be addressed online, come to our office hours, and I moved by yesterday one because typically no one shows up. And uh, to this afternoon, and another one by RTA this afternoon as well. So you can find out from 2.30 to 4.30 today. Another thing, we will have midterm next Tuesday. You can only take it in person. Close will close now. And don't forget to bring your student ID because we will check. And uh, you can review, you may review focus on materials to cover in lectures. Uh, uh, we will give you some hints uh, in the next lecture. And you should review your assignments. Um, also, uh, we will cover topics, include Thursday, yes, question? Uh, can we bring calculators to the midterm? You are able to bring calculators for the midterm. And uh, one last thing. So, a lot of you, when you are turning the assignment or the midterm, you are assuming that we are psychic reader. But we are not. So, don't use the reason like, okay, uh, I didn't write this, but you know, I know this equation, and I think this equation is obvious. No. Our TA, when he is grading, we tell, we, I specifically tell him, treat yourself as an idiot. If you cannot read the answer, don't give any points. That's the rule. I already tell you. And again, when you are doing your interview, right, you will do the same thing. And 
habits are important. We say that, well, don't worry about me, I'm gonna do well in my interviews. But again, if your habit is like this, you're not going to do well in your interview, trust me. All right, so I will see you in on Thursday and enjoy the rest of your day.